Today we are going to talk about squatters and mention some states, but you can read general information in the box on the screen. But before we start, please help the channel with your likes, shares, and comments. If you want to subscribe, smash the bell to receive all notifications. Squatters' rights by state adverse possession involves squatters attempting to obtain ownership of a property by proving they have lived on it for a specified period. Holdover tenants remain on the property after their lease or time has ended. If a holdover tenant is notified to quit for non-payment, eviction proceedings will begin after the statutory period. Unknown persons. If the property owner discovers an unwanted person living on the premises, the squatter will be converted to a tenancy at will and 30 days must be given to evict. Each state has its own rules. As you can see on the screen, how to claim squatters' rights, roommates and family members, tenants, Airbnb squatters. Individuals may claim rights as settlers if they are roommates or tenants or occupy abandoned or unoccupied property. A squatter has rights to the property until they don't, or at least until the owner finds out. Below are a person's common rights as a squatter in the United States roommates and family members. If the squatter is a roommate or living with family members, the landlord must legally remove the tenant according to the state's landlord-tenant laws. This typically requires the landlord to send a 30-day lease termination letter. If the person remains on the property, they may file a formal eviction. Tenants. If the tenant decides to hold over the lease, the landlord can send them a notice to pay or quit, usually lasting 3 to 10 days. The landlord may begin eviction after the notice to quit period has ended and the tenant is still on the premises. Airbnb squatters. If an Airbnb tenant has overstayed their vacation, the owner can have them removed without going to court. The landlord should contact Airbnb immediately if the tenant is under 28 days on the property. If that does not help, the guest is treated like a transient, not a tenant, and can be evicted as such by local laws. Adverse possession. Adverse possession is obtaining ownership of a property after occupying it for a specified period required by the state. If the settler has paid the property taxes, this can help them obtain ownership of the property faster. There are five ways to prove adverse possession, and all types must be fulfilled. Actual use. Open and notorious use. Continuous use. Exclusive use. Hostile use. Actual use. Actual use is defined as having dominion over the property. A person must use the property in the same manner as someone else would. Therefore, using the property for hunting or storage, for example, may not qualify in a residential area. Not every case of actual use is black and white. Other factors include whether a claimant actually possessed and used the land at issue will depend on the nature and location of the property, the potential uses of the property, and the kind and degree of use and enjoyment to be expected of the average owner of such property. Most importantly, the possession of the property must be substantial and not sporadic, meaning the property must be the claimant's primary residence during the actual possession period. Open and notorious use means a use that is so apparent that it puts the true owner on notice of the adverse claim. Property usage must be open for all neighbors and residents to see. Furthermore, the claimant should use the property so that the acts of the claimant's entry onto and possession of the land should, regardless of the basis of occupancy, alert the true owner of his cause of action. Continuous use. Continuous use does not mean continuing the property's usage, but that no third party, including the record owner, has interrupted the claimant's possession of the property one. The term constant or continuation is not defined. Although continuous use is met when the claimant is not interrupted at any time when using the property. For example, constant use was awarded for seasonal usage of a property in which a hunter could claim marshland as an adverse possession. A similar approach applies to adjacent land. Two neighboring landowners thought a property line was different for about 100 years. After the new property line was discovered, the court deemed that the property was continuously used through the statutory period and therefore, adverse possession had successfully occurred. Exclusive use. Exclusive use is defined as exclusive of the true owner entering onto the land and asserting his right to possession, one or acting, and using the property in such a way that it could be only expected of the rightful landowner. 
If the property has a stream, well, or other natural resources for use by any person, this does not constitute exclusive use. Exclusive use also means the possessor is not sharing the disputed property with the true owner or public at large. Hostile use Hostile use is defined in one of three ways depending on the state where the property is located. Bad faith. Good faith. Objective. Let's see bad faith. It must be expressed that the claimant was fully aware that the property was not theirs and operated in bad faith. States with a bad faith requirement, such as South Carolina, have had to prove this in most adverse possession cases. Good faith. Good faith means the claimant truly believed they owned the property and did not take possession, thinking it was owned by someone else. This is most commonly between adjacent property owners, and a tract of land is on someone else's side of the fence. At the same time, the claimant must prove that they had a reasonable basis for the belief, meaning some reason to show that they believe to own the property. If it's found that the claimant knew they did not own the property at any time, the property will return to its rightful owner. Objective. Most states have an objective view of hostile use, meaning the claimant neither has good or bad faith reason to claim adverse possession. Courts in objective states do not want the laws to reward the thieves while punishing the person who was merely mistaken. Simply put, the claimant must act as if they have ownership of the property as the valid owner, no matter if they actively knew they owned the land. An example of an objective use case was in Ohio, where a landowner sold two houses to separate owners. For some reason, one of the homes had a driveway on the neighbor's land. Due to the driveway's use for many years, adverse possession was claimed, even though the previous owner sold the land with the driveway on the other person's property. The claimant proved objective and hostile use through the statutory period. How to file for adverse possession. Step 1. Occupy the property. Step 2. Take possession. Step 3. Pay taxes on the property. Step 4. Find the owner. Step 5. File a lawsuit. Step 1. Occupy the property. A claimant seeking adverse possession must occupy the property for the statutory limit. This should be abandoned or otherwise in used property that the claimant is not trespassing in the traditional sense. Most adverse possession cases are one when the claimant occupies the property in good faith, meaning they believe it was theirs. Step 2. Take possession. If a claimant takes possession, they should put up a fence and have dominion over the property. This means acting as if the claimant truly owns and uses the property for its intention. For example, if it's land, they build a structure on it and make it their home. The possession must occur constant for the statutory period. Step 3. Pay taxes on the property. The claimants should do everything they can to act as the owner, including paying property taxes and other local utilities. To start paying taxes on the property, contact the local tax collector and find out if the taxes are being paid. In addition, any liens should be paid, although if the claimant believes they may not obtain rights to the property, they may not want to pay the property taxes and liens. Step 4. Find the owner. When the statutory period has been reached, the claimant should contact the local tax assessor or registry of deeds to find out the owner's name. This information will be needed when filing a case against them for the property. Step 5. File a lawsuit. When filing a lawsuit, the claimant will file a quiet title, which is a filing in the local property court to decide the rightful owner of a property. It's recommended that an attorney be hired to file a complaint in the local court and prepare one for adverse possession. Getting rid of squatters. Private property. Common defenses. How to avoid. How to evict. Common defenses. There are three defenses to use as a landowner to fight off adverse possession claims. Showing that permission was given by the landowner to the claimant. Open and notorious possession was not shown. For example, some states require known visible lines and boundaries. Others are also using the property. For instance, if the property has a soccer field and is used by a third party. How to avoid squatters. Make a fence around the property. Create no trespassing or private property signs. Give immediate permission to anyone using the property. Ensure they get their signature and keep a copy of the permission to use. How to evict. Evicting a squatter depends on the type of property. Squatters on raw land. The squatter should be immediately made aware of whether they are trespassing on the property for access or living in a tent. This can be done by calling the police. 
filing a petition for a court order or giving notice to the settler. If the squatter refuses to leave, a court filing may be made with the sheriff to remove the squatter physically after a court order. Squatters on residential property, if a settler lives on residential property and trespasses, the police should be contacted immediately. If, for any reason, the settler is allowed to stay, the owner should begin eviction proceedings immediately. Squatter's Rights by State 2024 Every state has laws regarding settlers, people who stay in another person's house or property without permission. The property owner will want to remove squatters, but each state has its own rules and laws for how and when this can be done. Some notable examples of state laws regarding squatters are below. Arkansas. After seven years, squatters can claim a home that isn't theirs. However, they must not sneak in and around the place. They eventually take over that property unless an owner tries to evict them. Financial rules also apply, such as having to pay property taxes. One person per property only typically applies to squatters attempting to claim land. An adverse possession cannot be divided among more than one person. California. Squatters can claim property after living on it continuously for five years. During this time, the trespassing person must have paid property taxes. They also need to improve the property, and the owner must know they are there without trying to conceal their presence. The owner must not have tried to evict them, either. Florida. Florida sees anyone who occupies a property without an owner's consent as a settler. Unlike trespassing, which usually might only last a few days or weeks, squatters intend on permanently taking over the property. They must have lived on the premises for seven years without owner eviction. Moreover, they must not hide that they stay on site and must prove they have paid property taxes. Other rules apply, too, and owners typically need to take legal action against squatters if they want. Montana. A squatter must have lived on a piece of Montana without an owner's permission for five years. In addition, they need to claim a title in real estate. That one squatter must be the only one living there for that period. They must not hide, and the owner must know they are occupying that space. Once these and related criteria are met, the squatter takes adverse possession of that land. Situations like this are complicated and often require legal representation. Tennessee. A case published in a Nashville newspaper illustrated how a squatter lived in a home foreclosed in 2012. This person paid property taxes, and he moved in to keep the county from taking the house. In Tennessee, a person has to occupy a property for seven continuous years. The owner can claim the property if they don't kick out the squatter. It's not necessarily this simple, however. Situations like this might involve time in court, such as if the owner tries to evict squatting inhabitants. Utah. If persons in Utah have continuously occupied the property for seven years, they could take adverse possession of it. However, several stipulations apply. They must claim title to that land and have paid related taxes. The original owner also must not have forced them to leave. To claim possession of land not inhabited with the owner's permission usually only applies to one person living on the property. The adverse title claim cannot usually be divided among multiple people. This is all for today. I hope you got something positive from this information. Thank you for listening. See you next time with more fantastic tips on trips and real estate.